Hey guys, good evening and welcome to the class. So let's quickly check uh, if I am uh, audible to all of you. Yes, okay. All right, great. Thank you. Thanks for the confirmation. And All right, great. So uh, I uh, believe that uh, everyone has uh, uh, completed the web analytics module, those who are attending this session today. So have you completed your web analytics module? Anybody who hasn't completed the web analytics module, because it would be difficult for you, you know, to uh, relate to some of the topics that we will be discussing today and in the next class. Yeah. So this is one thing. And how many of you have not done Google ads? Google Ads, the SEM module. No, last task is okay, Ravi. That is fine. The task is not the question. The point is if you have attended all the sessions. If you have attended all the sessions, yeah? Okay. So anybody who hasn't done uh, or yet completed the SEM module and the SEO module. You know, uh, SEM and SEO module, a part of this we will be discussing, okay? Uh, that's. Uh, the reason I'm asking here, okay, but that shouldn't be a problem if you haven't done this yet, uh, because that that's a small part. Uh, so you can always uh, check the recording if you uh, if, if if required, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Great. So let's begin because we don't have uh, enough time. I mean, you know, the time is the only constraint here in this uh, special session. So uh, I, I'll quickly start explaining uh, all the topics that we are going to cover. Also, uh, if you have any query, so what I suggest that you type it in the notepad, okay? And uh, when we are done discussing a topic or a subtopic, then you can please post in the chat box, yes? If you have very basic uh, questions related to web analytics, then it would be difficult for me to answer uh, during the session. But what I'll do, I'll uh, take those questions at the end of the session, right? Will that be okay with everyone? Okay. All right. So what is GIQ and why bother? The analytics individual qualification is a demonstration of uh, proficiency in analytics that is available to any individual who has passed the analytics IQ exam. Passing the analytics IQ exam provides tangible validation that you understand the fundamentals of digital analytics and Google Analytics. Thus. Qualified users will be more effective at leveraging Google Analytics. To earn an individual qualification in analytics, you simply need to pass the analytics IQ exam. And it's free. Okay, That's the best part. It's free. It used to be a $50 uh, test earlier, but uh, uh, it's free now. You can prepare for the exam at your own pace. And uh, when you are ready, go to the exam site. And I will be sharing all the links with you guys. Uh, the uh, preparation guide. Okay, a lot of things we will be covering in these two sessions. Uh, but still, there are videos from the Analytics Academy. Uh, I will be sharing all those links with you. I'll tell you where to register to uh, uh, take this exam. Okay, so I was saying that you can prepare for the exam at your own pace. Yeah, again, that's the best part. And when you are ready, go to the exam site. You will be given 90 minutes to complete the exam. There are 70 questions and the passing score is 80%. Okay, so uh, the exam is uh, uh, primarily uh, is uh, MCQ and uh, some of the questions are uh, uh, very simple uh, while 
many of them will be very tricky okay they will be scenario based and all that so you should be very very uh, clear with the fundamentals of analytics and uh, 90 minutes uh, believe me it's not a lot of time okay for 70 questions you really have to be fast the exam uh, comprises of uh, multiple choice and true and false questions and many of them are of check all that apply type you cannot pause the test you can also not mark questions and later revisit you can retake the, uh, this exam as many times as you wish. However, uh, you need to wait for a week before you can retake this test. Once you become qualified, your qualification remains current for 12 months from the date that you pass the exam and then you retake before it uh, expires. You can share your certificate with the others via public profile batch, but you are not given any batch and creating one is against google's trademark policies so uh, i will be sharing uh, with you that how it looks like on a on your profile the google analytics uh, individual qualification covers basic and uh, advanced google analytics concepts this includes planning and principles implementation data collection configuration and attribution reports metrics and dimensions okay. and i have already uh, said this thing that if you are attending this session after completing your web analytics module you will be absolutely fine and those who have completed seo and uh, uh, the search engine marketing uh, module it is uh, even better So the, these are the uh, units and the uh, lessons uh, for Google Analytics for beginners. Okay. Google Analytics for beginners shows new users how to create an account, implement tracking code and set up data filters. You will also learn how to navigate the Google Analytics interface and reports in this uh, Google Analytics for beginners while going through those videos by analytics academy and set up dashboards and shortcuts the course will demonstrate and i'm talking about the google analytics academy course okay the course will also demonstrate how to analyze basic audience acquisition behavior report and set up goals and campaign tracking most of the things you have already completed in your web analytics module uh, Things like setting up dashboards and shortcuts, okay, we will be covering in our next session, session number two of GIQ. Okay, this is something that we do not cover in web analytics. Okay, and uh, this is the uh, this is what you see for the, the, these are the units for advanced Google Analytics and the lessons under uh, advanced Google Analytics. Advanced Google Analytics walks you through how data gets collected and processed into readable reports. And uh, in this uh, section, you learn how to use configurations like custom dimensions, custom metrics, and even tracking to collect data that is specific to your business. So we'll be doing this in next class. Uh, I will show you how to set up custom dimensions. Okay, what is the uh, need of setting up the custom dimension passing that data to google analytics servers and uh, of course we'll be talking about custom metrics event tracking etc and this course okay again coming back to the analytics academy's course okay uh, this course will also demonstrate more advanced analysis techniques using segmentation we will be covering this channel reports audience reports and custom reports okay custom reports we'll be doing definitely in the next class and as well as marketing strategies like remarketing and dynamic remarketing that show ads to customers who have visited your website. So part of this we will be covering. Okay. So the important question is why digital analytics? Okay. And uh, following is a typical purchase funnel okay. funnel stages uh, describe uh, 
customer interactions. Uh, for example, acquisition involves building awareness and acquiring user interest. A behavior is when users engage with your business. Conversion is when a user becomes a customer and transacts with your business. In the offline world, this process can be hard to measure. But in the online world, we can measure many different aspects of the funnel using digital analytics. We can track what online behavior led to purchases and use that data to make informed decision about how to reach new and existing customers. Digital analytics helps you find opportunities and scale them. It also helps you find pain areas, fix and transform them into opportunities. Before we discuss an example of finding opportunities and another a pain area or an issue, uh, let's understand a few key concepts uh, like conversion rate and user behavior. Uh, you already know about these, uh, and uh, uh, this is just a, a recap of what you did uh, in your web analytics, and uh, uh, and of course in Google Ads also because there you uh, discuss conversion rate and you also talk about behavior. Okay, so as we all know that conversion rate. Is the percentage of visits okay I have by mistake written over here mis uh, visitors it is the percentage of visits okay in which your visitors take a desired action okay so what is a conversion it is the action that your users take on your website that you want them to okay for example you have an e-commerce website so you want them to confirm an order on your website okay that is the action you want them to take. that's a conversion for you if you have a lead gen website you want them to submit their contact details for sales prospect that's a conversion for you that is the action that you want them to take on your website yes so we are all clear with the conversion we all understand what is a conversion i believe yes so this can be defined as the percentage of the visits in which the users take their desired action okay and it could be on any online property including the mobile apps now the user behavior uh, let's take an example of uh, the user behavior uh, yeah so this is a, a screenshot uh, of the geolocation report where the uh, dimension selected a city okay uh, captured for some period of time probably a week's time and you can see that uh, the total number of users on this website in the selected period of time were 107,275, okay, or 1,07,275. And uh, the number of uh, sessions uh, in this period were 168,723. Bounce rate is 41%, 40.94%. So it means, what is, what is bounce? So technically, you define bounce as the percentage of sessions in which users had only one interaction with your online property. I am repeating, bounce is technically defined as uh, the percentage of sessions in which uh, users uh, had only one interaction with the website. Okay. Now, in the simplistic way, you can define it as the percentage of sessions in which your users exited the website from the same page they landed on. Okay or they left the website from the same page they landed on without going to any other page okay i believe everyone knows what is bounce okay this slide are you talking about this slide yeah You'll get this uh, presentation, so don't worry. <clears throat> you have uh, configured your name as sound. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, that's very interesting. <laughs> did you <d> <laughs> did you do it intentionally? If you did, I <laughs> Sondaria. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I get it now. 
okay all right okay so i thought this is this is interesting someone is uh, configuring as sound okay 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 all right so okay so coming back to this this is what we were discussing right so we understand what is a bounce now now what is the uh, bounce rate for the uh, bangalore it is 36.49 percent and it is the lowest you can see in this uh, report and then the highest bounce rate is uh, for the users of uh, Putne. Okay, that is 46.92%. And you can check it for New Delhi, you can check it for Pune, you can check it for all, all the cities like that, that that we are seeing in this report, Kolkata, Mumbai, etc. That they are behaving differently. Are they not behaving differently? Are they, are they uh, behaving differently when it comes to the bounce rate? Yes. The general bounce rate is 40.94%, but users are behaving when they are coming from uh, different uh, locations. Now, let's take another example. This is the time, average time they spend in a session on your on this website, 4 minutes 56 seconds. But who's spending the maximum time? Users from Mumbai. Who's spending the lowest time? Users from Putne. And you can check it for all the locations. They are behaving differently when it comes to the time they're spending on your website. Pages per session, 4.99. They see, they view 4.99 pages uh, in the uh, in their respective visits, okay, to the uh, website. Uh, but who's uh, viewing the maximum pages? These are the users from Bangalore. Who's viewing the minimum number of pages? These are the users from Putne. And you can check it for all other locations. So by looking at these three metrics, they are also called engagement metrics. These are the behavior metrics. They are also called engagement metrics. You can uh, understand the user behavior. Uh, users from this location are least engaged. What is that location? Putne. Users from this location are most engaged user. What is that lo location? Bangalore. Okay. You can check that Bangalore's users are also, you know, spending enough time on the website. Okay. And it is the second best if you can see. So that way, this defines the Bangalore users are most engaged. It is 5.29 for Mumbai users and it is 5.17, yeah, 5, 5 minutes 17 seconds. So that makes, these are the users most engaged on your website. And when it comes to the time people are spending, the most engaged users are this, okay. You can, you can uh, the, the Mumbai users are. And you can also check the Mumbai users are also, their bounce rate is fine, okay. And uh, they are also viewing enough number of pages. And they're spending good time, okay, on your website. So they are engaged. They are hooked to your website. Now, uh, are we clear with the user behavior? See, I'm sure uh, uh, many of you already know about these things. Okay, it is just a recap. It is just a recap. A very quick recap uh, so that we can start discussing a lot of other things uh, this point onwards, yeah. Okay. Now, uh, what is the conversion rate on this website? This 5.28%. So it means for every 100 visits, 5.28 times the orders are confirmed. And the best conversion rate is for Bangalore visitors. They are converting at a fantastic 8.19%. The lowest conversion rate is for Putney users. They are converting at 1.11%. And then let's find the opportunity with this uh, information in hand. You can see uh, average the site average is 5.28% conversion rate. And uh, for New Delhi, it is 3.45%. Uh, okay, so those who have done web analytics with me, they probably remember this example because I generally start with this example. Okay, uh, the reason why I start with this example so that you have a better connect that what are we are going to do with the Google Analytics, okay, in uh, general. So you find opportunities, when you find opportunities, you scale them. That is the only objective of your, right? Because this is why we are here. This is why we are we are using any tool. We want to find the opportunities. We want to scale it. At the end of the day, we want to increase the revenue or we want to increase the number of leads. And uh, we also want to know the pain areas. So we'll find areas, we'll fix them and we'll transform them into the opportunities. Now, check. This is for 24,000 sessions. Okay, in the selected period of time, and they're converting at 3.45 percent, and the revenue is uh, 456,000 rupees or 4,56,000 rupees. Now, 
Bangalore uh, users are converting at 8.19 percent, and their revenue is close to 700,000 rupees or 7 lakh rupees. So, which is much higher than uh, New Delhi. But you check that uh, number of sessions from Bangalore, 15,000 sessions. As compared to New Delhi, it is very low. Okay, we had 24,000 sessions from New Delhi, 15,000 from Bangalore. Even then, <coughs> the Bangalore users gave you much higher revenue than New Delhi visitors. Do you see this as an opportunity? Yes, of course. Why? Because Bangalore is a big city. Okay, it's the technical hub also. So you have you have this opportunity to acquire more visitors from Bangalore and increase your revenue because we have already seen in this report they are converting at a fantastic uh, rate. So all you need this time that you acquire more visitors from Bangalore and how you can do that? You can run a campaign over there. Okay, you can run a Google Ads campaign. You can run a Facebook campaign. Okay, so whatever you do, you know all the methods to acquire more users from a specific geography, and then you can increase your revenue. What are the other cities that you see as an opportunity in this report? Let me know quickly. What are the other cities that you see in this report as opportunity? Mumbai and Chennai. Yeah, Mumbai and Chennai. All right. So. So Mumbai, uh, 11,000 sessions, okay, much lower than New Delhi, okay, not even half of it, but it has given you more revenue, higher revenue than New Delhi, okay. Mumbai is not a small city, okay, so you can, so you have, you still have a lot of, uh, you know, opportunity, so you, you, Mumbai has a lot of potential that ways, you can acquire more visitors from Mumbai and then you can increase your revenue because they are converting at a fantastic 6.55% and then same goes with Chennai we have seen this over here Chennai is converting at a 6.6% and with less than okay uh, approximate 8000 sessions they are very close to uh, when it comes to the conversion very close to the New Delhi's conversion so Mumbai, uh, Bangalore, Mumbai and Chennai okay, are the opportunities for you. So that is the advantage of using a digital analytics uh, system that uh, you can find opportunities by looking at the report. Hyderabad is uh, also fine, uh, Murugan, but my point is, yeah, Pune is also fine, Shobit. But the point is, uh, what, is what is going to be your sequence? Will you grab the lowest hanging fruit first? What is the lowest hanging fruit you see over here? Is it Bangalore? Is it Bangalore? And then Mumbai and then Chennai and then you can you can keep yeah, then you can keep targeting other cities also. Yeah, are we clear? Okay. So All right, let's find the pain area. Okay, so we have uh, used digital analytics to find the opportunity. We know how to scale uh, this, okay, or we know how to increase the revenue now. The conversion rate of online shoppers worldwide as of fourth quarter 2017 is 3.26%. You can see it has not seen even 3.26 uh, percent in all uh, previous four quarters okay you can see this this report is from a very credible source called statista i'll share this link with you let's check what is the current rate current conversion rate so this is the conver uh, conversion rate of online shoppers worldwide as of second quarter 2018 and you can see it is 3.15 and uh, this is uh, quarter 4 2017 and the last quarter which is quarter 2 2018 it was 2.86% okay so you can see that it is not reaching even 4% so it is said okay research based that the conversion rates vary 
conversion rate varies between 0.5 to 4 percent if your conversion rate without any extra effort is two two and a half percent you are doing really 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 well you need to in, uh, uh, optimize it to increase it okay but that's the general conversion rate it varies i'm repeating between 0.5 to 4 percent now this is general right in some industries you may see a, a different uh, you know uh, range but that will not be uh, different drastically okay there will not be a huge gap okay? but in general you should keep in mind if you are converting between 0.5 and 4 percent okay so depending upon where you are closer to 0.5 or closer to 4 percent you can decide that how your conversion rate is now you can always check this uh, resource for different kinds of reports some reports are free some reports are paid you can see you can check it check for your premium for their uh, <coughs> premium account etc okay now coming back to this <coughs> so we we know this is not going to exceed 4% okay and we haven't seen even 4% 3.5% is what we seen so on this website the aggregated data when you are looking at it it the conversion rate is of 5.4% are we doing already good as compared to the conversion rate of online worldwide shoppers data uh, uh, shoppers <coughs> are we doing already good yes okay now you see to disappoint you i'll show you the segmented data device this is a device category report and i'm sure everyone knows that yeah so the desktop is converting your desktop traffic is converting at 8.25 percent <clears throat> then who screwed up okay so it's your mobile traffic which is converting at 0.85 percent okay so that is why your overall conversion rate or your aggregate data is showing you 5.4 percent isn't it and <clears throat> what is more frustrating let's see over here the mobile users okay are uh, 33 percent of your total traffic you can also see when you talk about traffic you should always check the sessions not the number of users okay because the conversion rate bounce rate uh, they are calculated on sessions number of visits not on users so 33 <clears> percent they the number of uh, sessions or the total traffic contribution of the mobile devices is 33 percent this traffic is converting at 0.85 percent and that is the reason your overall conversion rate is 5.4 percent this could have been much better <coughs> uh, how do you fix this uh, issues with the uh, with the mobile traffic so i'll quickly uh, tell you uh, the loss why i am telling you this calculation okay because uh, i want you to be good with numbers yes uh, if you cannot calculate okay so you tell me honestly do you see this as a problem and this question is not for the participants who have attended my web analytics session because you know every trainer has as per their uh, you know comfort level okay uh, they give their own examples okay the content is same the intent is same okay but examples may vary okay i take this example usually okay i'm not sure if other trainers uh, other web analytics trainers are taking this example okay so this question is not how many of you have attended uh, web analytics sessions with me yes sonal i remember okay okay nitin all right yes so two people in this group who attended session with me okay in web analytics okay so uh, so all right so you remember this example sonal and nitin sorry uh, yeah nitin yeah yeah okay so you'll not be calculating this <laughs> okay so this this is not for you you're not going to calculate this so my question uh, is now <clears throat> what is the problem over here do you see is it the is it really the conversion rate 
what is the real issue over here quickly tell me because you know uh, i will be covering a lot of things today so quickly tell me is it the real is the low conversion rate a problem here or what is the real issue here what is the real issue here high bounce rate come on sonderia no you, this is an e-commerce website come on what is your primary objective what do you want to do you want to generate more revenue isn't it you want to generate more revenue even on a higher bounce rate if if our conversion rate is good and we are generating a fine revenue i don't care about the bounce rate pages per session mm -hmm. mobile site is an issue low revenue yes low revenue is the low re low revenue is the low revenue is the issue yeah the real issue is low revenue you want to know what is more frustrating in this case do you want to know what is more frustrating in this case yeah i tell you okay so let's do let's calculate this quickly okay <clears throat> how many sessions we had i will be writing this in my text editor number of sessions number of transactions conversion rate and revenue how many sessions we had from these mobile devices 1409 1409 how many transactions we had 12 transactions okay that makes this conversion rate of 0.85 percent five thousand two hundred and thirty six is the revenue okay now with the same numbers if you start converting at the desktop rate 8.25 percent if your mobile traffic starts converting at 8.25 which is desktops conversion rate how many transactions you will have calculate that 8.25 okay how many transactions you will have how many transactions you will have if you start converting at 8.25 four point two two nearly a hundred no nothing called nearly 100 you calculate it what is nearly 100 what is 4.22 no 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 no. is my question clear to you i am saying if you start converting at 8.25 how many transactions you will have okay so let me show you this so how many sessions we had 1409 into 0 0.0825 so you will have 116 transactions if you start converting at 8.25 so you will have 116 transactions are we clear are we clear this is simple to calculate what is the average transaction value in this case what is the average transaction value 5236 divided by 12 yes so 5236 divided by 12 436 rupees so average transaction value is 436.33 that's the average transaction value. 
uh, if you still have the average transaction value of 436.33 what will be the revenue what will be the revenue you tell me now you multiply this with 116 one one six into four point three six point three three sorry what i did four thirty six point three three into one one six so five zero six hundred and four let's write it fifty thousand six hundred and four Oh, sorry, 614, sorry, 614, okay. So what is your loss? What is your loss? Can you calculate the loss now? I'll calculate this for you. Why I am spending so much time over here? I want you to understand the pain. 50,614 minus 5,236. This is 45,378. 45,378. This much is your loss. Is it clear, everybody? Is it clear? This much is your loss. Did you get the pain area? Are you feeling the pain now? Is it really the conversion rate? Is it really the bounce rate? Is it really the engagement? What is the pain? Now tell me what is the pain? The revenue loss. Is that clear? The revenue loss is the pain here. And you want to know what is more frustrating? Do you want to know what is more frustrating? What is more frustrating here? It's again not 45,000 rupees. You are losing this every day. This data is of one single day. This report is of one single day. So that much you are losing every day. Are we clear? Did we find, did we find a pain area? Did we find a pain area? Do we know the solution? Do we know the solution? <coughs> What is the solution? What is the solution? This website is not mobile friendly, clearly. Okay. This website is clearly not mobile friendly. Technically speaking, this is not responsive. Make it responsive, fix the issue. Okay. Now, for argument, some people will say that mobile traffic will never convert at the desktop rate. Yes. So, what is the tablet conversion rate over here? it is close to 4%. So even if you are not converting at 8%, you are converting at 4%, you are not losing 45,000 rupees, you are losing 22,000 rupees, let's say, uh, approximate, okay, every day. You are still losing. If you fix the problem, you will increase your revenue, okay? So this is a pain area. If you fix it, you can transform this, is, this into an opportunity. Now tell me, are we clear, everybody? Are we clear? That is the advantage of using a digital analytic system. All right, so <clears throat> different kinds of businesses can benefit from digital analytics. Publishers can use it to create a loyal, highly engaged audience and to better align on-site advertising with user interest because that is how the content publishers are making money in the online world, okay, by ads. So they need a highly engaged audience, okay. Higher engagement will definitely lead to uh, more ads, uh, views, impressions, and clicks. And e-commerce businesses can use digital analytics to understand customers' online purchasing behavior and better market their products and services. Okay, I gave you only one example uh, that uh, uh, Bangalore uh, 
is an opportunity for us mumbai is an opportunity for us chennai is an opportunity for us when you start analyzing in the right manner your data okay everywhere you will understand the purchasing purchasing behavior and uh, a lot of other things uh, that can help you understand the uh, opportunities <coughs> and uh, lead generation sites can collect user information for sales team to connect with the with potential leads while we have uh, talked about uh, primarily talked about collecting data from a website google analytics can also collect behavioral data from a variety of systems such as mobile apps online point of sale systems and video game consoles customer relationship management system or any kind of system which is uh, any kind of digital system which is connected to internet okay now you have a question through the contact us form uh, sandeepan through the contact us form you have a web form on a lead gen website yes you want to see an example so this uh, uh, website is of uh, a packaging machine uh, manufacturer okay so in general uh, uh, there is a contact form okay uh, if you go to the contact us page so there is a general contact us form okay so this is how you collect it but then there are products okay the, for example you can see the uh, linear wear machines or you can see a lot of other things okay and uh, if you go to any so let's say i am somebody uh, who's uh, into uh, 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 some kind of you know uh, uh, bottling and i need a bottle packaging machine so what i'll do i'll i'll go to this page this product page and there you see a, a form over here okay and this will automatically capture that what machine this user is interested in right if you go to any other uh, if you go to any other uh, uh, product page this will uh, capture of course uh, the details that you uh, you want to uh, capture from uh, uh, through this form but it will of course uh, capture uh, the name of the product or the machine the user has shown interest in automatically so that's that's how you collect lead that's how you collect lead are we clear and a lead is nothing it's just the contact information for sales prospect then your sales team will jump into this and will start following up right okay so uh, we all know how to how google analytics works i will be skipping this topic completely i will be sharing links with you guys of the analytics uh, academy's uh, uh, video tutorials there you will have a uh, you you will get an overview of this once again i am sure uh, this was covered in detail in your web analytics module okay so we'll be skipping this the, the <coughs> how how does it work or what kind of uh, information it collects the only important thing that i want to share with you here are two plugins okay so if you go to a website like this and you want to check uh, if the analytics tracking code is present on the page that you are viewing or not okay you, you know you can always let me sign out from here logged in as an admin right now you can always right click and go to view page source option and you can check if the analytics tracking code is present or not you can also use a plugin called tag assistant google analytics tag assistant okay so you install it enable it and reload the page and it will report if analytics tracking code is present on the page that you are viewing or not so this is how you check so it is showing you all the tags that it has found on the page so the name of the uh, uh, plugin is google tag assistant and it is available only for chrome okay if uh, 
I, I have tried a couple of times searching the this plugin for Firefox or another browsers, but I didn't find. Okay, uh, so uh, I think it's not available for other browsers. Okay, so you can install it only on a Chromium based uh, uh, browser like Chrome. Okay, so just Google Google Tag Assistant and then you install it, and this will appear this uh, as as a smiley on your uh, what do you call? Uh, Toolbar. Okay. Now, <clears throat> what information is sent to Google Analytics servers when uh, a page hit takes place, or an event hit takes place, or a transaction hit takes place? So, for that, you can use a very interesting plugin called uh, GA Debugger. Okay. I have uh, installed this GA Debugger. So, what do you have to do? Go to again Google. And type uh, GA debugger for Chrome. This is called Google Analytics Debugger. Okay, install this plugin. Go to Chrome Web Store, install this. If you have Chrome right now uh, installed on your system, you can install it. In my case, it is appearing as removed from Chrome. In your case, it, if you haven't installed it, it should be like uh, add to Chrome. So GA Google Analytics Debugger or GA Debugger. <clears throat> now, when it is installed, this will appear like an envelope uh, on uh, the toolbar, and make sure that this is on. So this is on, and then you go to your settings menu of Chrome, go to More Tools, and then go to Developer Tools, and then go to Console. And see what information you see over here. Fantastic. This is showing you everything that Google Analytics tracking code is sending to analytics servers. Okay, so this is tracking back in. Okay, this is tracking back in. But this is you you can't uh, uh, I mean this is this looks really cryptic. So uh, there is a breakup. Okay, I'll just zoom in so that you can read it clearly. Okay, this is this is what it's saying. This is the the tracking backend, and it's running this command, and then that this has in, sent this information. What information? Your client ID. This is the uh, ID. I'm sure everyone remembers how Google Analytics identifies you as a unique user. So a number is assigned at the cookie called underscore GA, which is called your client ID. This is that number. And hit type is page view. You will see event view, page view, transaction view, and then you can see what is the language set to the browser, the URL of the page you are viewing, the resolution you are on. Okay, currently that's the title of the page you are viewing. That is your analytics tracking ID, and again a viewport meta and all these things. So you can see a lot of information that this tracking snippet is sending to analytics servers with the help of this GA debugger. You can check this here. Okay, so I'll show you this once again. So you are clear with this part that you have to install a plugin called GA Debugger. So on the is that clear? Okay, once it is installed, make sure that this is on. This is on. Then you go to the Chrome's developer menu. Go to the developer menu. Sorry, the settings menu. <laughs> and over here in more tools, you go to developer tools. Make a note of it quickly. Settings menu, more tools, and developer tools. Then developer tools will be loaded. Go to the console tab, and this is where you see it. Okay, this is where you see it. Clear? Got it now? Everybody, is it interesting? Okay. How many of you have done event tracking? How many? How many of you have done event tracking? Do you know the event tracking in Google Analytics? You know the event tracking in Google Analytics? Yes? Okay. You want to see what kind of information is sent when you have set up event tracking? You want to see? So, okay. So, this is the website of this uh, fitness trainer. Okay. He is a doctor by profession. Okay. A good friend of mine. So, uh, when we were working on this program, okay, uh, we 
so I de- I designed this program with him. Uh, so that's one of the things that I do. I design programs also. So we were designing his fitness program, okay, and then uh, we thought of having a website, of course. So we we designed this landing page also. We had this content, and then uh, we added some photographs. He's sixty six, okay. So touch wood, I should say touch wood. He's a dear friend of mine. So he's sixty six, and these are the recent photographs you can see. Yeah, so this. Now, is it important for uh, uh, him to know what are the photographs people are zooming in or enlarging? Is it important? Is it important, right? Now you can see, and is it important what videos people are playing? Yeah. So for that, we implemented event tracking. And you can see this over here. Are you seeing this? Enlarge. That's the action. Event category, the event label, and all that. Hit type is event. This time you are seeing event type is hit. Okay, over here, it, the event, uh, sorry, the hit type was page view. Are you seeing the difference? So, this is a very interesting plugin, and this will help you understand a lot of things about it. Okay, what data is being sent to analytics services? Everybody clear with this? <coughs> Ruchida, Ravi. Shobit, everybody clear? Sandeepan, Sonal, everybody clear? Yeah. So f- use this plugin uh, to understand uh, what kind of information is being sent. And uh, if there is any issue, you can check this over here. All right. And I can show you he, he just published a video also. This is very interesting if you are in the Delhi NCR area. You can check this. Since we are talking about his website, Anyway, so you can check that later. Oh, that's okay. So <clears throat> that's a video that you should check. If you are scared of pollution, okay, the air pollution, uh, you should check this one. You should check this video. I've shared the link with you uh, in the uh, chat box. Okay, where he's uh, uh, explaining about the pollution. Anyways, so coming back to what we were discussing, even tracking, right? So anyway, so th- this is what uh, is all about how Google Analytics works and uh, collection component, processing component, configuration component, and uh, the reporting component. You should uh, please bear in mind, once data is processed, it cannot be reprocessed. That is why you must understand what you are changing in the configuration section. Okay, You applied a filter and then you removed it after five days. So if you are removing a filter, and hoping that whatever was excluded uh, through that filter in those five days, you will get it back in that view. You won't get it. Okay, the filter will not work from now onwards because you have removed it or you have disabled it or whatever. But you have lost that data for five days. You are not going to get it back. Okay, so in Google Analytics, once the data is processed, it cannot be reprocessed. Please uh, bear it be, uh, bear this in mind. And uh, I these slides are for your reference, okay? But uh, I will not be covering anything over here because you you already know about all these things. You have already covered all these things, okay? <clears throat> and I have written everything for you, okay? So that you can refer to it. The uh, user level permissions and all that. The permissions at three different level: uh, account level, property level, and view level. You all understand that. What is the purpose of having different views and all that? But still, I have. Uh, uh, created those slides for you okay and uh, yeah of course let's see more about uh, just quickly remind you the filter setup and all these things okay so I think we can we can discuss more on digital analytics the fundamental things of uh, digital analytics 
Just give me a second. Let me open another slide. And you have uh, access to Google's demo account. Do you have access to Google's demo account? Everybody has access to Google's demo account? Yeah? Okay. All right. In case you don't have access, okay, I am posting the link over here. I will be sharing a lot of links with you. You can see that in my... Uh, text file I have uh, a lot of links okay so those links are for you only so Ruchida you can get the access to uh, Google's uh, demo account through this link okay I post it in the chat box okay so in case anybody doesn't have access okay and uh, let me share this link as well with you guys that how the bounce rate uh, in how the the page load time okay how the page load time impacts the bounce rate okay this is a research uh, based uh, data you can check this okay and a lot, lot of other uh, links i will be sharing with you don't worry uh, that i am not sure after the uh, class uh, or uh, you can post it to everyone not just me okay you have posted uh, this to me only. Okay, so post it uh, to everyone, the entire audience, uh, so that uh, uh, everyone knows that uh, what is being discussed. Okay, yeah, so please post it to everyone. Okay, so the question being asked is uh, uh, Will you share the, uh, the uh, presentation DAC after the class? That I cannot tell you. Uh, I'll request Geetika, okay, to share this ASP, ASAP with you guys, okay. I'll request Geetika, okay. I, I'm really not sure if it will be shared tomorrow or it will be after the next session. I, I am not aware of that, okay. But I'll just write it over here. Request Geetika to share the presentation deck with everyone. ASAP, right? I'll do that. Okay, all right, but not for a special session like this. Uh, Ruchida, you you will get this uh, uh, sheet only after you submit the feedback, isn't it? Is it a deal? Yeah, it's a deal, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> You submit the feedback and you will get all the all, all, all the links, all the links. Uh, let me show you, okay? Uh, let me increase the uh, the temptation over here. You see, whatever whatever I find, <laughs> whatever I find interesting, uh, I, I keep adding those links over here. You can see that, okay? This is a long list. <laughs> There's a long list, okay? Okay, anyway, so... <laughs> Okay, coming back to this. Yeah, coming back to this, uh, you will get all these links. Okay, uh, in the presentation deck, I have included this. Okay, so you will be getting all these links. Okay. Yes. So let's talk about the uh, the what is uh, digital uh, again analytics. So Avinash Kaushik. Okay. Uh, who is a well-respected uh, uh, digital marketing evangelist. Okay, he defines this as the analysis of qualitative and quantitative data from your business and the competition to drive a continual improvement of the online experience that your customers and potential customers, uh, which translates to your desired outcomes, both online and offline. Now, the problem is this definition sounds ambiguous, okay, little ambiguous at least. So, to simplify this, I have taken out the key elements of this definition. 
customers, quantitative data, qualitative data, measuring outcomes, business objectives, continental improvement. Yeah, that's what it is. Once we are clear with these key elements, you will be absolutely fine with this definition. Okay. So, <clears throat> customer, uh, I think I need to add this slide. I have uh, uh, stopped a lot of things. What Justin Kutroni, okay, uh, 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 said about customer, okay. But uh, I tell you what he says. I, I let me summarize this over here. Justin Kutroni says that the, that the customer is at the center of the universe. Okay. With all their choices and controls, customers customers can start their purchase journey at any point along their decision path. Therefore, businesses need accessible, reliable, holistic, and near real-time consumer and customer analytics to understand how well they are performing. <clears throat> now, you will uh, you will have a much better uh, you know connect with what uh, Kotroni explains over here. Uh, when we will talk about attribution modeling, okay? Because when it says uh, the customer is at the center of universe with all of their choice uh, and control, customer can start their purchase journey at any point along their decision path, okay? So this is what we will be doing, okay? And uh, uh, a marketer's job is to figure out how to tap into this new dynamic and anticipate where customers will appear and what basis they need to hear this part will be absolutely clear when we will discuss the, the couple of reports in google analytics okay so what is quantitative and we'll revisit we will revisit the customer definition okay so what is quantitative quantitative is something that answers what what is the size of your online audience what are the locations they come from what is the performance of your online marketing and what users or people do once they visit your website so quantitative is something with which answers what let me show you this over here on this store merchandise store that's google merchandise store rochika you will get access to this account okay and uh, uh, let me tell you what website it is it is this is this website google's own official merchandise store shop.googlemerchandisestore.com google has been kind enough to share the analytics account of uh, this store okay and uh, it is a read only access okay but that is more than enough for us to practice this okay now uh, if you go to audience report and you talk about overview and this is for the last 7 days data you can see this okay by default it shows you the last 7 days data and here if I ask you what is the size of your online audience, so you can say 15,265 users if you are talking about last seven days, okay? Well, what are the number of visits on your website, okay? So 19,000, so 19,000 plus. What is the bounce rate? That's the bounce rate. What is the average session duration? This. So these metrics are like sessions and users and pages per session and the bounce rate, average session duration, etc. They are answering what? So that's the quantitative data. So quantitative data answers the what. Qualitative data answers why. Okay, it tells you why something happened. Have you ever uh, submitted a feedback? Have you ever submitted a feedback? Have you ever submitted? Have you ever taken a part in? Uh, have you ever taken a, a part in a survey? Okay, now you tell me. At the end of every session uh, of a digital vidya, uh, you are given a link, yes, uh, through which you submit your feedback. Why do, why do we collect feedback from you after the session? Why do we collect the feedback from you? Okay, why feedback is very important for digital vidya because this is how <clears throat> we know if we could deliver what you expected from us, or what is that that we should be improving what what is that that we should improve yes or if you really liked it because this could be a mix of it okay lot of things you really liked some of the things you suggested that you can tweak it over here for example the pace of the session okay some somebody says that i uh, i think it should be a little slower okay whereas the whereas for some sessions some people can say that this could be a little faster okay 
yeah so it is to improve the session okay so why so surveys feedbacks uh, and uh, uh, ab or multivariate testing they are the methods these are the methods to collect the qualitative data okay uh, do you know about the ab testing how many of you have done email marketing how many of you have done email marketing no did you did you uh did you discuss the ab or or, or the, the your web trainer i'm sure uh, your your trainer uh, email marketing trainer uh, must have uh, talked about ab testing yeah to know which approach or option works better yes okay so you can do the ab testing to know which is going to work ab is also in mar mar inbound marketing that is right absolutely okay so you collect qualitative data for example you want to increase the price of a product okay so you can show price so there are tools available you can do this on your website okay there uh, there are tools through which you can you can collect this data so some people are saying that on uh, your e-commerce website you should now increase the price of the fastest moving item so let's say the pr current price is uh, uh, rupees 100 and some people are saying that increase this price by 25 rupees okay so set it now to 125 rupees now uh, other people are saying that if you increase the price this will impact the sale okay the volume and uh, this is not a good idea okay it is uh, one of our uh, uh, popular products because of its pricing also that is playing a very important role in this so what you can do you can show price rupees 100 to 50 percent of your users and to rest 50 percent you can show 125 there are tools available you can do that okay it is possible to uh, do this that 50 percent of your users are seeing 100 rupees price and the rest of them the other 50 percent are seeing 125 so let's say you sold with this price uh, 100 uh, in, a, in, a, in a week let's say and with this you sold 90 now you tell me is it is it possible for you to decide if if you want to increase if you want to increase the price with this method can you can you do this <clears throat> what will you do what will you do will you increase the price will you increase the price will you increase the price yeah your data is showing you your data is showing you that you can increase the price and you are selling less okay you are selling less so is selling in lesser volume <clears throat> with higher revenue is is a better option because less returns less service and support i am not talking about a 100 rupees product in general okay there is hardly any support or hardly any service on a 100 rupees product but i am saying uh, to make you understand this thing that if it is a high value product where service returns guarantee warranty all those things are applicable yeah so why not if i if i am selling less okay that my that's my indirect cost cutting isn't it you are providing a service uh, on a lesser number of units so why not okay so a b testing that's the method a b testing if you have three different options or four different options or more options that is called a multivariate testing okay so you can do a multivariate testing also so these are the methods you collect a qualitative data that answers why why i should increase the price why i should not increase the price why should i change the price uh, the color of this uh, button why shouldn't i change the color of this button okay, why should i change the text of this button why should i not change the uh, text of this button something like that okay now one of the most important steps of digital analytics is determining what your ultimate business objectives or outcomes are and how you expect to measure these outcomes 
these are five common business objectives if your business objective is e-commerce knowing how many orders you got in a given period of time is your measurable outcome which is also known as kpi key performance indicator <clears throat> in google analytics they are called goals okay so kpi when you want to when you want to set up conversion or you want to measure outcome or you want to uh, set up kpi then you set up you configure goals in google analytics in e-commerce uh, you set up e-commerce uh, uh, implement tracking uh, also okay that we will talk uh, i don't know if we can do this today if we'll have time we will talk today about e-commerce transaction setup or we will be doing this in the next class <clears throat> if it is lead generation collecting contact information for sales prospect okay is uh, the uh, is the measurable outcome uh, defining those goals okay we uh, saw that exam of that uh, Packaging, manufacturing uh, website, manufacturer's website, okay, monkey.in. We saw that, okay. So that's a, that's a that's an example of a lead gen website. So you set up goals for all your web forms, content publishing, okay. Let's say there are two websites, okay, and uh, they are okay. There are two blog websites, okay. And uh, they are on uh, home decor and interior. Okay, home decor and interiors. Two website. So let's say uh, website A and website B. And they're very popular. They're very popular. Okay. Now you are uh, an interior designer. You want to publish your ad on one of the websites. Uh, you don't have budgets uh, to publish your ad on both the websites. I'm not talking about Google Ads, okay? I'm talking about they are selling space directly on their website. Okay, so you can have a banner on their website, so or, or whatever. Okay, so this website says that I have hundred thousand visits every day. It is a very very popular website. Okay. This guy also says, I also have 100,000 visits, approximate, right? Average, every day. Now, with who can charge more? They are content publishers, right? They're content publisher. Who can charge more? This guy says that I charge X, okay? And this guy says, I charge 2X. How it is possible for you? To understand or for this person to charge more charge a premium so what you can do in this case if you are a content publisher what is the key over here when you talk about the content publishing can anyone quickly guess can anyone quickly guess what is the key or what is the most important thing that you would like to know about your users who are visiting your website. Location, buying capacity. I'm repeating, it is a blog website. Okay, it is a content. Uh, rich website what is the most important and you make money by showing the ads what is the most important thing that you would like to know type of content page view subscriber number of clicks okay all right okay all right so let me put it this way this guy is saying i'll charge x rupees this guy says i'll be charging 2x now, how this guy can charge more than this? Okay, by showing that, of course, the number of visits are sa same. Okay, they are they they are they are they are very close to each other, but my audience is more engaged. Okay, my audience is more engaged. Twenty five percent of my visits in twenty five percent of the visits. Uh, users view more than 10 pages
Now tell me, higher engagement will lead to the probability, okay, let me put it this way, the probability of ad impression, the probability of getting more clicks is higher with the highly engaged audience, is higher with the high, highly engaged audience, yes, is that correct? So can we say the number of visits may be same, the, the traffic can be same, but my audience is more engaged. But my audience is more engaged. Are we clear, everybody? My audience is more engaged. This is the reason I'm charging more. Yeah. Can you do that? You can do that. You can sell your analytics uh, uh, matrix. Why not? Yeah, why not? So, in case of content publishing, knowing, because, you know, the content publisher make money by showing ads. So knowing the impressions, the clicks and all these things are important, that's okay. But you have more, okay, you would like to know that. So you can define it. So I'm sure you remember that in Google Analytics, you can define a goal called duration goal. You can define a goal called pages per session goal. Yeah, that is the importance of this goal. Are we clear? Are we clear? You can do this. If you are a content publisher or if you have a client who is into content publishing, set up these kind of goals. Okay, and also uh, this is just an example that you are charging. Okay, you can also use these uh, uh, to understand the uh, engagement and increase it further, enhance it further. Okay, and then uh, you have uh, online support. So uh, you want to know how many leads you are getting in a, uh, a specific category. So categorized, you know. Uh, information about conversion is very very important okay so you are getting uh, leads in this uh, category called uh, uh, let's say ac repairing or uh, maybe you have you have you have a top level category called appliances and then another is uh, let's say food delivery and another is repairing or whatever okay so you can have categorized conversions to understand in which category you are getting more inquiries and you are getting better results and all that. In branding, I generally give this example okay, because I think it looks pretty good to me. This Vitara uh, Brezza page this is the landing one of the you know uh, products of. Uh, If you call it a product, Maruti, Maruti Suzuki. Now, you tell me, is it important for these guys to know how many times the color palette was used and what color was applied? Is it important for these guys to know? Is it important for these guys to know how many times this video was played? Is it important for these guys to know how many times brochure was downloaded? Is it important for them to know how many times people are exiting to social platforms like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, but why it is important, you tell me. Why it is important? It is important, you told me, but why it is important? Can you guess why it is important? Keep writing. Thank <clears throat> you.
customer intent people choices to know consumer insight preferences understand customer liking okay and potential buyers understanding the customer information for engagement leads okay now let me behavior let let me clear if you talk about leads and potential customer none of these interactions giving you a hint for a lead if i am simply changing the color over here okay by through this uh, uh, the color palette these guys are not collecting any contact information so i am i i am not a lead in this case okay it is not possible to uh, check what is my contact details just because i interacted with this element okay so this is certainly not for uh, uh, getting an idea of lead this is definitely and and potential buyers you say okay Th there is no way to figure it out with this kind of information so that is not a possibility even remotely what is possible with this as some of you said understanding uh, a little about what user uh, preferences are so one of the user preferences can be taken so let's say most people applied this color most people applied this applied this color by default they are showing this color but most people applied this color this blazing red and midnight black now can this be used as the people's preferred color for this vehicle and they can use this color in the next tv commercial in the next print media ad can they do this yeah are we are we collecting some qualitative data here with this with this are we collecting some qualitative data can we relate to that yeah you are so can can this be taken as a poll or a survey that what is it? yeah so if it is getting a decent uh, number of visitors on the website you can use this information uh, through the uh, event tracking chandramohan you can do this with the event tracking yeah okay now what you can do with this information when most people are going to facebook okay can you based on this information can you decide that your next social campaign will be on the facebook because most people visited facebook yeah can we collect this inform can we collect information in this way yes we can do that you know why we are discussing all these things so that you are not limited to these five common business objectives okay understanding e-commerce is simple lead generation is simple on content publishing i gave you an example that only knowing the revenue okay through the ads okay impressions and click and all that is not important you can collect a lot of more information like the time they are uh, spending the pages they are viewing so that you can use it in your favor okay uh, in any ways okay uh, and uh, uh, branding example so you can have a different objective than the listed ones over here okay that is the whole idea of this discussion now when you are into the implementation mode of the uh, web measurement infrastructure you talk to the stakeholders okay you understand the stakeholders you talk to the owners people who are in the decision authority that what is that they want to see in google analytics okay don't just assume that i will be setting a goal and my job is done okay if you really want to be a good analyst so you should discuss it with the stakeholders that that what is that you want to uh, see in the uh, analytics i give you one example okay because uh, uh, i've been doing this for a uh, very long time i was implementing uh, uh, this infrastructure uh, for someone and uh, they were accepting payments online so i thought setting up an e-commerce thing is very very obvious isn't it if you are accepting payments online will you set up e-commerce tracking will you track will you set up e-commerce tracking isn't it obvious isn't it obvious so that is what occurred to me also and then i set with their developers okay so i tell you a little about me i come from the development background so i understand how to write code uh, when it comes to the e-commerce implementation all that but it doesn't mean that we should know uh, how to write code then only we can get it implemented 
okay so that that, that is not my you know uh, intent of sharing uh, this with you it's just by chance that i come from the development background okay so uh, i was working with their developers and i got it implemented okay i helped them how to implement e commerce tracking and they they did it now after that they uh, this gentleman said what you have got implemented is absolutely fine but now you see uh, after this implementation i realize that i don't want it this way okay now pay attention this is very important i was thinking when someone pays online this should be recorded he said no we don't work this way we take on monthly basis okay so uh, sometimes what happens people only submit a lead from the website okay so website is helping them in two ways generating leads and uh, transactions so he said sometimes we only get leads and people pay offline offline means they didn't pay through the website they deposited the check or they uh, transferred through nft or the rtgs or whatever okay or they paid cash now th this actually this all started through the website isn't it this all started through the through the website only so will you not include these kind of uh, uh, transactions that uh, took place offline in your analytics do you want to see them do you want to see that is it is it is it a fair requirement since the lead was generated through the website it doesn't matter the the payment was in offline it should come into google analytics to understand absolutely fine the real contribution of the website and revenue generation are we clear everybody are we clear what i am saying yeah so this is a, so this is where i missed this is where i missed in my implementation and then i said okay uh, let me know more about it okay i got this uh, requirement and i'll get it implemented don't worry okay so this can be done okay sure morgan i am saying a website through a website you can generate a lead and uh, people can pay in offline also or through this website people can pay directly through the website do you want to see both kind of uh, transactions into google analytics <clears throat> isn't it the website generated a lead and people are paying offline also so 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 would you not like to see all these transactions into google analytics of course we want to see that why we will be missing now when i said that okay i understand you have a different requirement than a usual e-commerce tracking okay so i'll get it implemented now you tell me do you have anything else that you want to share with me because you didn't share enough with me in the beginning okay so he said okay yes uh we also take into installments we take payments into installments so this is not always a lump sum kind of payment or a upfront payment so we let's say the person visited the website and paid only 5000 rupees and the rest of the amount this person paid in installment in offline or some installments offline and some through the website now you tell me is it a fine requirement is it a requirement yeah so this is where in my beginning i missed it because i i didn't have enough information okay so anyway so whatever happened after that so we got it implemented in this way okay we got it implemented in this way by the way i tell you if you are interested in offline tracking okay so there is something called uh measurement protocol universal analytics google analytics uh, is latest version is known as universal analytics universal analytics measurement protocol this was implemented this kind of offline tracking and all that from leads to e-commerce was implemented with the help of universal analytics measurement protocol so you should read a little about it okay don't worry about the coding part okay we uh, we don't have to write anything okay about when it comes to the code it is part of your development team and they will do it okay 
uh, they will go through the documentation uh, on the uh, developers uh, section on Google uh, documentation and they will do it. Okay, so again, uh, let me uh, re-emphasize on this that it is not your job. Okay, so my point is this is not limited to these five common business objectives. Whenever you are implementing Google Analytics, remember that you discuss it in detail with these stakeholders that what is that they want to see into the Google Analytics and then you implement accordingly. Did I make my point clear? Did I make my point clear? I gave you example of Maruti Suzuki also, the Vitara Breza, that they, you, I'm not sure if you, if you, uh, in the beginning, you realize the importance of this color palette, how this should be implement, uh, implemented. I don't, I didn't, I don't know if you realize the importance of this kind of interaction also. When we talked about this uh, fitness trainer, okay, I don't know in the beginning you had realized that it is important to under, uh, to know if people are interacting. We want to see this into Google Analytics that what are the photographs people are enlarging. You know what, what, what can be done if you see that people are not, uh, most people are not seeing this. Okay. Uh, and uh, people are seeing him in action. People are seeing him in action. So we will be adding only the photographs where uh, he is in action, isn't it? We will not be sharing the general uh, photographs like this that where he delivered a program in Mercer. But, but anyways, but if we see that people are equally interested in all the photographs, so we will be adding, you know, all kinds of photographs over here. Making sense? Making sense? Yeah, okay. All right. So I believe I have given you the enough examples when it comes to your goal setup, e-commerce transaction setup and all that. Now, the action can indicate an objective. So you have macro conversions, you have micro conversions. So, you know, conversion is actually conversion. There is nothing macro or micro when it comes to the a goal setup in Google Analytics or conversion tracking in uh, uh, Google Ads or uh, 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 Facebook Pixel, etc. Conversion Pixel, etc. There's nothing macro and micro. It is uh, conceptual, basically. So uh, let's understand this: that uh, the macro conversion is the ultimate goal. It is the ultimate objective for an e-commerce website. Uh, an order is the ultimate objective, okay? They want order. That is the action they want you to take on their website. You are the end user. But there are other things also, okay, that you should track. And those other little less important things are called micro conversion. So it is important to measure both micro and macro conversions so that you are equipped with more behavioral data to understand what experiences help drive the right outcomes for your site? To understand what I said, let's go to Google and take an example. Let's say Shobhit and me are working in the office and uh, Shobhit suddenly asked me, Rajiv, let me know the uh, buffet deals in Delhi. Okay. So what will I do? I will also go to Google and I'll say buffet deals in Delhi. That's what I'll do. Okay. And then I see uh, nearby. I click on that link. And I see so many deals over here. Uh, and it is saying around you. Okay. So wherever I am sitting right now, uh, that that is how it is. Okay. And uh, let's go back. So I see one from barbecue and the GT road and fresco and there's so many. So what I will do, I will copy it and I will give it to uh, Shobit and I'll say, okay, here are a couple of deals on uh, nearby.com. You check it. Now, I really like the idea. Uh, it is the very first time that I am seeing nearby.com and I like the idea. So I, what I did, I visited the homepage. And I am seeing that the deals are not limited to the buffet. There are uh, 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 um, deals on massage, okay, 
and food spa and uh, uh, on uh, services like a uh, uh, salon okay and activities i find a lot of deals over here okay uh, this this cafe and uh, kfc and and a lot of other things so what i did but i said me and shobhit are working okay we are in the office so i am not in the mode of buying a deal right now i thought i will buy a deal later when i'll reach home or once i am uh, done uh, with the task in hand because i want to complete that okay like anybody else i want to finish the task first and then i'll check the deal etc so uh, instead of leaving the website and uh, buying any deal i simply created my account over here or i subscribe to their newsletter okay now when i have visited their website and if they are they have implemented remarketing okay so i am already in their list i am already in their audience list now i uh, let's say uh, fb remarketing list and google ads remarketing list so whenever i'll go to any site that has a provision to show google ads i may probably see an ad by nearby.com and if i am on facebook then i'll probably see uh, an ad uh, on facebook on my news feed by nearby.com so that is one way another is since i registered i created an account i had to submit my email id or when i signed up for a newsletter i had to submit my email id so now they have my email id also so they also have nearby guys they also have an opportunity to target me through emails or through remarketing or whatever right so it is important to know how many newsletter subscriptions in a given period of time how many user account creations in a given period of time not only how many deals were bought in a given period of time okay because then later you can analyze that what is the percentage of users who subscribe to your newsletter and then later they bought a deal how many what is the percentage of users who created a user account and then later bought one or more deals so you can analyze this behavioral data it is only possible if you define these kinds of goals on your website so you will have a goal for e-commerce tracking then uh, the deals right and another will be a uh, newsletter subscription and the user account creation so i'll repeat it is important to measure both micro and macro conversions so that you are equipped with more behavioral data to understand what experiences help drive the right outcomes for your site so you should implement both are we clear are we clear with the importance of macro and micro goals everybody yeah okay so this model has been given by avinash kaushik and he says you implement your measurement infrastructure okay for example you do it with google analytics and you get this data in the reports then okay you analyze it you test so i gave you an example in the beginning that uh, bangalore uh, looks like an opportunity to me so i will test okay i will not be testing with all the locations first okay so we, uh, we some of uh, somebody said that hyderabad is also uh, uh, hyderabad is also promising it is looking promising i think morgan said that and somebody said that pune is also looking promising so i said that to don't uh, start with all of them together all together you do it step by step uh, grab the lowest hanging fruit i see bangalore is the most promising thing over here so i'll start with bangalore so if things really uh, uh, turn uh, the way i am anticipating then i'll start with others mumbai chennai pune hyderabad etc so you test okay and you see the result and then you implement those uh, uh, changes okay uh, what you have uh, experienced through the testing mechanism maybe a b testing multivariate testing and all that okay and it's a process okay it's not a one time job it's a process you keep on doing this you implement measurement infrastructure you see the data in reports you analyze it you test something then you, you implement the uh, what you have uh, experienced through those tests and then you keep on doing this it's a continual improvement then we have core analysis techniques okay so there are many different ways to analyze data and segmentation context uh, are critical to good data analysis 
So let's see the importance of segmentation. I have already given you two examples of segmentation, but I'll repeat it. Okay, I, I'll remind you where did I give you this example. You remember our uh, the pain area example where the conversion rate was five point something and the uh, desktop conversion rate was eight point something. Yeah. So how did we know that we are losing every day? It's because of the segmentation. Because we could categorize that data, we could segment that data uh, 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 as the device category. Okay. Another example that we uh, saw of the segmentation was location-based segmentation, location-based categorization of your data. That helped us understand that Bangalore, Mumbai, Chennai, Pune, Hyderabad, they are the promising locations and they are these locations are the opportunity for us. Okay. So this is the, the power of segmentation. Okay. Looking at aggregated data helps you understand overall user behavior trends. Okay. For example, five point something was the aggregate uh, conversion rate. And we are happy because we are doing it because we are converting at a much better rate. We know the online conversion uh, rate worldwide is 0.5 to 4 percent. We are already doing it close to 6 percent. So I am I am really relaxed. Okay. But it is the segmentation that helped me understand that I could have done much better. Okay, so I'll repeat this statement. Looking at aggregated data helps you understand overall user behavior trends, like how their purchase patterns change over time. But in order to understand why purchase patterns change, you need to segment your data. Yeah. Do we all understand the importance of segmentation? We have seen the examples of location segmentation. We have seen the example of the device category segmentation. Let me show you one more example. This is the uh, okay, this this we have already done. Sorry, this we have already done. Uh, I have one more example. Let me see if it is in this presentation. Yeah, this pain area and all that. I have already covered this. Uh, not sure if I have this here. One second. Device category example. Yeah. So segment. Okay, I'll give you that example in some time. That's okay. Uh, so segmentation allows you to isolate and analyze subset of your data and drilling down to look at segments of your data helps you understand what caused a change to your aggregated data. We have seen examples already. These are a uh, couple of examples of segmentation, date and time uh, and device category, marketing channels like uh, the organic traffic, how it is behaving and converting, uh, social traffic, referral traffic. Uh, organic traffic, paid traffic, email traffic, direct traffic. So all that, uh, uh, you know, the uh, channel wise uh, traffic and the geography we have already seen, okay, the location and customer characteristics like new versus returning users conversions. Okay. Now uh, we'll talk about, you know, uh, the advanced segmentation. I'll, this is the, uh, the segmentation or the categorization of data that you see in Google Analytics reports. But there is uh, something called advanced segmentation. Okay, if time permits, we'll do it today or we'll do it in the next class. Advanced segmentation, we'll do that. Okay. Uh, and another important analysis technique is adding context to your data. Okay, and context helps you understand if your performance is good or bad. You can add internal context to your data analysis. And you can also add external context uh, to your data analysis. Adding internal context is simple because you use your own historic data as benchmark and you use this as key performance indicator. Okay. Let us say uh, you are somebody uh, who's into uh, tours and travels. Okay. And uh, you are based in India, you are operating here. The uh, tourist season uh, is uh, uh, between October and uh, February. That's the time the weather is pleasant. And uh, you are using your 17, 18 data. Okay. You are using your 17, 18 data as benchmark. 2017. 18 data as benchmark and you are comparing your 2018 19 data with this okay 
to understand that in this period, let's say you had uh, 5,000 leads, okay, and then you have 2,000 conversions, and then your revenue was, let's say, this much, and in this period, you had 6,000 leads, and then you had 2,500 conversions, and then you had this revenue. So this is this is the revenue. Okay. Now this is your 2017-18 data. You are using this as benchmark. Can I say that you did better in 2018-19? Uh, Can you see this? That we did better in 2018-19. How would you know that you did better as compared to 2017-18 data? When you use 2017-18 data as benchmark, okay. So adding internal context to your data analysis is very simple because it is your own data. Okay, you can do that. But of course, you need to do this analysis. In Google Analytics, you can do this. Let's say if we go to conversions over here, e-commerce conversion in this report. And I choose a period uh, of... Uh, January 2018 and I am comparing it with the previous year. So 2017 January is my benchmark, 2018 is the data that I am analyzing. And now I can see that uh, my average order value has increased and uh, number of transactions have gone down, e-commerce conversion rate has gone down, revenue has gone down. Can you see that? that we have lost in the month of January 2018 as compared to January 2017. So adding internal context is simple over here. Now you have something called external context. So you use industry benchmark data okay, or you use your competitors data okay, to understand whether you are doing uh, better than industry trends or you are doing better than your custom, uh, competitor or not. Getting the industry data is simple. Okay, because in most cases, because the reports are published that industry-wise that you can uh, buy. Okay, and in some cases they are available in uh, public domain. If you talk about uh, uh, the competitors' data, so if your competitor is a listed company, okay, listed in a stock exchange, it's a public limited company, then they have to publish their data. Okay, uh, uh, I'm sure uh, some of you already know about this. So if it is a public limited company, they have to publish their reports quarterly. Okay, you can get the data and you can use it as a benchmark and you can compare it with yours to understand whether you are doing better than your competitor or not. If it is not a limited company, okay, then getting that data could be a little difficult. But uh, uh, in 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 business, uh, everything is possible. People do that. I'm not saying that one should be going by unethical ways, but uh, this is possible. This is what happens. Okay. So you can get that data and you can use it in online uh, for your online activities. There is a method you can use it. Okay, uh, I am not sure how many of you know about it. So the similar web. Do you know similar web? Do you know similar web? How many of you know about similar web? Or let me put it this way: How many of you don't know about similar web? Similar web is fantastic. Okay, and it is. So damn close to the uh, analytics. I have tested with many accounts that we manage. Okay, uh, some uh, high traffic e-commerce websites that we manage. Some very very high traffic uh, content system where we have seen in peak three hundred thousand three lakh visits in a day. In its peak, we see that kind of traffic. Okay, and we have 
uh, matched the Google Analytics data with the similar app. It is very close, very close. Uh, so I have tried it. Okay, so th this looks really, really good to me. So let's say you are uh, Asian Paints. Although the companies I'm talking about, they're both listed. But anyways, Asian Paints. Dot com. You are Asian Paints. Okay. So it says the country rank is 1513. Let me tell you if there is a website on similar web uh, which uh, whose traffic rank is uh, under 2000, okay, country India, believe me, it is a very high traffic website. Very, very high traffic website. And you can see that this is the, this is the overview. 1.96 million visits in last month. Average session duration, 4 minutes, 19 seconds, 3.91 pages per visit, and that's the bounce rate. Okay, and I have already told you, I have compared it for many accounts that we manage, okay, and they are very close, okay. And anyways, if even if they are not very close, okay, pattern-wise, they are very correct, okay. So, they are very close to the, uh, to the, the, uh, the analytics uh, pattern-wise, okay. Now, if you are really interested how this data is collected because you haven't given your, uh, you haven't given permission to collect this data, how they are getting this data, they don't have anything on your website, how they are collecting this data. So you can Google about it. You will, you will, you will find how similar web collects data. Uh, people have explained it on Quora. People have explained it on YouTube and somewhere else. So uh, it's also listed on similar web. Okay, that how they collect this data. So this, uh, the, so this is a question that. Uh, uh, should not come to me okay at all you can google about it you can check that uh, they get maximum traffic from india then from united states from the emirates and indonesia and all that and this is about the last month traffic now this this is the organic traffic on their website this is the direct traffic referral traffic social traffic mail traffic display traffic this is these are the websites driving traffic to their website and these are the websites people are going to from their website and these are the uh, keywords organic keywords and the paid keywords people are using on google search engine other search engine to uh, to reach their website and this is the social traffic and all that you can check that later uh, if you are more interested in this data you want it for a longer duration you want more data then you can check their paid plans over here so now you want to compare your performance with narrow -like. Have you seen uh, Nerolex uh, recent ad campaign, TVC, TV commercial, in which this uh, Ranveer Singh is saying that your uh, 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 fridge, your refrigerator, your car, your washing machine, your microwave, yeah, you have seen that? They, uh, a lot of companies, okay, they use Nerolex. Did you know that? Okay. So what are you waiting for? Yeah, what are you waiting for? They are trying to, uh, you know, establish the authority they're trying to establish the fact that they are not limited to the wall paints okay they are into other uh, other 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 uh, industrial uh, things also okay so they are trying to prove that we are best okay anyway so th 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 that's fair so you as asian paints you want to see what happened the last month is there any impact of their tvc okay th that's a very interesting campaign you, you must check that okay so you wanted to see let me compare my with mine is this impacting anything so i am comparing narrow lack over here with asian paints and you will see this now the benchmark is you you are the benchmark your company and your competitor you are comparing is data now it could be other way around you narrow lack as uh, uh, the benchmark and asian paints you are comparing with now you can see uh, the engagement 1.96 million on Asian Paints, 1.23 million on Narolac. That is amazing. You know, if you see the data for one month, this, this is really impacting. Well, I was only giving this example because I have seen those ads a couple of times. So they have done something really good. They were uh, close to 500, 600. Uh, you know, uh, 500,000 visits in a month, or maybe 200,000 visits in a month. If you check the previous data, uh, you need to check did, take the uh, paid plans. They were far behind. They have come very close. 1.23. That that's that, that's interesting to see. 
but anyways if you look at the engagement they're far behind uh, if you talk about the the duration the pages per visit and they're still far behind but they're catching up very fast on the uh, traffic so that that is interesting so that is how you add external context to your data analysis are we clear when it comes to data and context, adding context uh, to your data analysis are we clear everybody are we clear okay okay will it be okay with everyone if we if i take it for another 15 minutes will that be okay another 15 minutes will be okay with everyone yeah okay because we have taken some time in uh, you know discussion so i just want to complete one thing okay uh, the practical part of it we will do because we don't have time uh, in the next class but let's understand the concept Two important concepts used to measure the customer journey, conversions and conversion attribution. So conversion is when a user completes an action which is your business objective. Okay? We know that you have an e-commerce website, you want them to buy, uh, you want them to place order on your website. Conversion attribution, uh, it's assigning credit for a conversion. Okay. Uh, assigning credit for a conversion is uh, conversion attribution. <clears throat> Conversions are important in digital analytics as they are the performance indicators. We know about it, macro conversion and micro conversion. Now, conversion attribution is assigning credit for a conversion. For example, uh, let me write it over here for you. A user searched something on Google, clicked an organic link, and landed on your website. So, Google organic, okay, and this user did nothing on your website. Uh, let me write it this way viewed five pages, and this user was added to fb remarketing list fb and google ads okay both now this user uh, saw because it's it's in your audience list now so saw an ad on uh, on facebook in the news feed so next visit okay so this visit was let's say on 1st november right and then saw an ad on 2nd november clicked on that ad landed on the website and let's say view two pages uh subscribe to email So or let me write it newsletter subscribe to newsletter and this user then uh, uh, got an email or maybe let like google ads saw uh, an ad banner ad on google display network so what is a google display network it is the collection of those websites that have the provision to show google's ads okay so let's say this user was on a website uh, where saw the and let's say this website oh my god ubuntu.co.uk or you can check it take any website for that matter uh, so uh, you will see an ad over here google's ad so let's assume that this ad is of this website i clicked on this and then i landed over there let's say this one this one and i landed over there okay and uh, so I am here, okay. I am over here, but I didn't viewed three pages, and then I created a bookmark. 
so i am saying okay this is looking good to me and uh, i have subscribed to newsletter i have done everything so what i am doing right now i am creating a bookmark here i created a bookmark let's say this way okay now uh and this was november 3 then i click the bookmark so this is or, or let's say not the bookmark then i got an email and i got this email on november 4 and i viewed two pages finally using the bookmark which is a direct visit yeah when you click a bookmark it is considered as a direct visit on november 5 i reached the website viewed three pages and placed an order this is this is a conversion this is a conversion now you tell me my question to you will you assign this will you give this credit to google organic of this conversion or facebook or google ad or email or direct visit which channel should be given the credit of this conversion is my question clear to everyone shubham is that clear sandeepan is that clear sonal which channel should be given the credit of this conversion first one okay all right so should i stop spending on facebook google ad email thing and yeah all of them all of them okay now let's understand a concept okay this is called attribution type so you have last click attribution model you have non direct click model you have last ads click model first interaction linear time decay position based model last click attribution model is the most common type and uh, last click means that all of the value associated with the conversion is assigned to the last marketing activity that generated the revenue it means considering the last click model the conversion attribution or the credit of this conversion should be given to the direct visit okay let's see it here in google analytics i'll just get rid of it uh, this comparison and i'll go to acquisition i'll go to all traffic channels so this is how it is through organic we had 294 transactions social 11 direct conversions 212 referral means some other websites 1626 30 conversions through paid search three display to affiliate and none from other are you seeing this now this is the last click attribution model that says that you should give all the uh, credit okay uh, to the last channel or to the last point touch point Okay, so in this case, this is going to be the this direct visit. Now, Google follows. Okay, before that, we have used last click attribution for many years because it is the best measurement we have had, and I'm talking about offline as well. But now, modern web analytics tools can help us understand all of the marketing activities that help generate each conversion. Do you know CRMs? Do you know CRM solutions like Zoho CRM? there are there are many there are many kind of uh, crms okay they are used to understand 
this behavior okay online offline both you get a lead in offline that is entered into crm then follow up uh, happens and a uh, uh, lot of time customer the potential customer uh, comes back on his own okay so every interaction is recorded in crm okay yeah customer relationship management that's right so everything is recorded in a crm so that you can figure out what are those touch points okay and every interaction is recorded means every time a sales person or a, an executive or agent interacted with everything is recorded okay so you can figure it out but before crm it was very very difficult and a lot of companies do not use crm uh, even as of now but anyways when it comes to the modern web analytics tools so they can tell you that what are the channels that the customer or the user interacted with before converting okay and this is important because customer will likely interact with you many times before conversion occurs and i'll give you example for that now you you said you you can give the uh, conversion credit to the first channel or to the last channel you must realize this thing that the attribution is a lot like scoring points in a basketball game okay or in a football game it takes more than one player to make it happen okay if you talk about football uh so the a uh, player that scored the goal should be given all the credit or you would like to give credit to the players who pass the ball very well to the uh the forwarder or to the player who scored the goal if you remove those players assisting the forwarder okay from the team will this player be able to score goals no so so marketing channels are like players okay some make assist and some score goals okay and to properly understand the value of each channel you need to know which role it has played in your customer's journey to conversion okay that is what we will be seeing so are we clear yeah are we are we clear that if someone tells you i don't see enough conversions from facebook now you stop wasting money on facebook now will you now tell me will you do that by under after understanding this thing will you say yes we are losing a lot of money on facebook unnecessary we are not getting any direct conversions but you can see that facebook is helping you to bring back your users on the website yes so if you remove that so probably this uh, broke over here this had broken at this stage probably okay so let's say if i remove this one if i remove this one now tell me if so this is how the user converted through google organic landed and then uh, added to the remarketing list on facebook and then saw that and came back subscribe to newsletter uh, got a newsletter click that email then created a bookmark and then finally converted now is is it is it is it is it an important channel for you because if you remove from here the user will never reach this stage the user will never reach this stage are we getting it so these channels are helping actually okay so sometimes a channel is responsible for direct conversion sometimes it has played a played a role of an assist a, the last non direct click model it is followed by google analytics okay it says the uh, last non direct click model ignores direct traffic and attributes 100% of the conversion value to the last channel that the customer click through from before buying or converting so it means if we look at the google analytics reports this conversion will be attributed to email are we clear if you talk about google ads if you are looking at the reports in google ads those who have done google ads do you remember the conversion window which is of 30 days by default 30 days conversion window you remember that what google ads model says it claims all the conversions if the user had visited the website by clicking the ad in 30 days or in the conversion days uh, in, in that conversion window okay and uh, we'll talk about this in a minute so this is how it is okay so google analytics will this credit to 
email and not direct channel so this is the last non direct click model then you have last google ads click model the last uh, ads click, click model or adwords click model attributes 100% of the conversion value to the most recent adwords ad okay that the customer clicked before buying or converting so no matter what happened after that visit means this visit okay google ad says this is my conversion okay this is why you will see discrepancy in google ads data and google analytics data are you are you clear with this you will always see conversion data discrepancy if you are conversing if you are comparing google ads and google analytics data in the next class i'll share those uh, discrepancies okay so then you have a model called uh, uh, linear model time decay model this slides these slides will be shared with you okay so you can you can go through all of them yeah i'll i'll tell you that uh, i'll tell you uh, chandmohan i'll tell you all that okay in the next class i'll explain you what is this data discrepancy and how how you should understand that so you can use this knowledge to better understand your customer's journey and allocate your marketing budgets accordingly okay now i'll show you reports here in uh, if you have set up goals or if you have set up uh, e-commerce you will see these reports here in conversion section in attribution model model comparison tool now you see what model we have taken last interaction model so the direct conversions are also awarded over here and we are seeing this for january 2018 and we are saying we don't want to see all the conversions we are only interested in e-commerce conversions this is an e-commerce website i only want to look at the e-commerce conversion i'm not interested in, in other things like engaged uh, users and user registration all that for now i am only interested in e-commerce so that's the reason i have selected e-commerce over here now it says uh, how many days you want to consider for this kind of interaction before the conversion took place right in this case we have taken a period of 5 days okay so we are saying 30 days is good enough you can change it this can be between 0 days to 90 days okay zero makes no sense so it means a user in 30 days visited your website n number of time okay n is any variable okay so you, it can be 2 or 3 or 5 or 10 or whatever 10 so n number of times user visited in 30 days 30 days prior to the conversion okay so consider all those interactions so considering that last interaction shows you had uh 1253 direct conversions and 741 referral conversions 163 through google organic 16 through paid search paid search means where utm parameter was cpc and social network 4 and display mean where the utm parameters were uh, utm parameter was cpm so this is how it is now i'll compare it with last non direct and you will see a change in the data and you will immediately able to relate to this according to the last interaction model 1253 conversions happened directly when user landed on your website directly but the moment you change it to the last non direct click it says no 529 conversions through last when the user interacted with your website directly directly means uh, entered the uh, the url uh, in the browser's address bar or clicked a bookmark okay so since there is a difference in this data now so this difference will be given to referral of course and then this will be given to organic and this everywhere you are seeing a difference are you seeing a difference why there is a difference because these conversions took place uh when you are not giving in uh, you are not giving a uh, attribution of this conversion credit of this conversion to the direct channel if the user was on the website once again uh, and in the previous visits earlier visits this user uh, used a different channel like email referral etc okay so that is the difference are you seeing the difference over here are we clear with this you can add one more mod model over here okay you can add one more model over here for example 
last Google Ads click. And you will see this difference. Now tell me, are we clear? Are we clear how this data is? Over here, Google, ha Google has, okay, it is showing you that 1,238 direct conversions, 735 uh, referral conversions, and 159. And you really want to see what is that? What is direct referral, etc.? So you can switch to so source medium also. So that is how you can see. So now tell me, are we clear with this report? Are we clear with this attribution modeling report? Are we clear with the attribution modeling? Everybody. In the next class, we will start with the multi-channel funnel report. Okay. So we, we took more time today to discuss the fundamentals. Uh, but that's okay. We'll try to cover in the next class. So we'll start with the multi-channel funnel reports. You will get amazing insight how the conversions, uh, conversions take place on the website okay and this will be absolutely clear uh, for once and all uh, uh, that what the what is the importance of a channel uh, uh, in the uh, in, a, in, in a customer's journey of uh, conversion right okay so this is it for today everybody any questions any query All right then, so I'll sign out for the day and uh, we'll connect once again in the next class. Okay, great. No, no, there is no feedback today. The feedback link will be shared in the next class. Okay, in the next class. All right. So thank you. Good night. It's late. Uh, bye bye. Yeah, I am glad to know that. Thank you. Bye bye.